Hey everyone, welcome to another TypeScript data structures video. This is a video series where I talk about the details and implementation of data structures in TypeScript. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the basics of a binary search tree. A binary search tree is a data structure somewhat similar to a linked list, but different in one key way. In a linked list, we have a list element, and then we link that list element to another element in a list. This chains the elements together. But in a binary search tree, instead of linking one element, we link to two, a left and a right. By having a left and right link, it allows us to add an additional feature that makes binary trees very useful. The left element will contain values that are smaller than the current value, while the right element will contain elements that are larger. This makes searching and inserting into a binary tree much more efficient than a linked list. Binary trees are typically depicted in a top-down format, with the head of the tree, which is normally called the root, being at the top, and the lowest level of elements that don't have a left and right child, those are called leaves. There's some pros and cons of a binary tree. You can search for values quicker than in a linked list. You can also insert quicker. And this tree is a great way to store ordered data. So if you have data that needs to be in any sort of um, sorted order, a binary tree is a good way to store it. The cons of a binary tree is that accessing elements directly is slower than with an array. With an array, if you know the value of the index, you can access it directly in constant time. Also, if a binary tree is unbalanced, it doesn't really hold an advantage over a linked list or an array. You only gain the benefits of a binary tree if it's a balanced binary tree. We're not going to go into too much detail in this video about balancing binary trees. But the next binary tree video in our series, we'll talk about balancing them and the different forms of balanced trees you can use. All right, let's start by creating our node. So we're going to have a class called tree node. And this is going to have a public element called data, and that's going to be a number. And then we are going to have a left, which is a tree node or null. And then we're going to have a right which is a tree node and all. And then we're also going to make our constructor, which is going to take in a piece of data. And it's going to set the value of data to the value in the constructor. And then we're going to initialize left to null and right to null. Pretty simple start. So our node class has pointers to the left and right nodes below it, and also data that the node is holding. Our next step is to build our actual binary tree class, which will hold the root node and all of our utility functions. So let's do that now. This class is going to be called binary search tree. We have a head, which can be a tree node. So the head and the root are the same thing. Uh, it's different terminologies, they're both valid. And then we have a constructor a head, and this is optional. It's going to be a tree node. And then we're going to set this to head or null. So what this will do is if there is a value in head, it's going to set it. If not, it's going to set it to null. Pretty simple. So let's take a look at our very basic example to start. So we're going to create the root node. We're going to make it a new tree node and we're going to give it the value of 50 and then we're going to create root node dot left as another new tree node 35 and then root root node dot right is a new tree node and that's going to be equal to 60. then we're going to create our binary search tree and that is a new binary search tree with the head as root node all right, now let's see if that works. We're going to console.log our binary search tree. All right, ts node bst.ts. All right, so we got our tree back. We see that the head is a tree node with data in it. And then we see that the left child is another tree node with the value of 35 and then the right child is a value of 60. So just like that we have a basic binary search tree. Now let's talk about some utility functions that we're going to use. 
So the first thing we want to do is make it easy to insert data into our binary tree automatically. One of the key features of a binary search tree is that for each parent node, the left child is less than the parent and the right child is greater than the parent. This is what makes binary trees so efficient because we're able to cut down the number of things we have to look at. We're going to write a recursive insert function. So let's do that now. We have a function inside our binary search tree class called insert. It's going to take in a node. That's a tree node. Or it can be null. And then we're also going to set a default value of head. And then this function is going to return a tree node. And then we also want to take in a number. This is the value we're going to insert into the binary search tree. All right. So our first edge case is if the node is null, then what we want to do is create a new tree node called the root and set it to head or set it to value. Sorry. All right. And then we want to return that. This is the base case for the recursive algorithm. So what's going to happen is if you've, if you've never worked with recursive algorithms before, we're writing a function that is going to call itself over and over again, traveling down the tree. And then when it gets to a point where we find no more nodes, that's where we insert. So this is our base case. So what we want to do is create an else statement here. And then we want to say, if the value is less than the current node's data, then we want to call this function on the left subtree, node.left. And then if it's not, we want to call it on the right subtree. Just like that. And then down here, we're going to return the node. So this is going to it uh, recursively travel down until we reach an empty spot. And it's going to keep checking and trying until we insert the current node. This will happen until it reaches the right spot in the tree. And then it inserts. So let's give it a test drive. Let's insert a couple nodes. So we're going to keep our current tree here. And then we'll do it like this, bstree.insert. We're going to pass in the head of the tree. We're going to insert 30. Let's do it again. Insert 20. All right, let's do some larger ones. We're going to insert 40. And let's insert 70. All right, we're going to insert two more, but I'm just going to copy them over. Here we go. All right, now let's take a look and see if that worked. All right, so now we see that the left and the right child of the first ones we have have their own tree nodes now. We can also see that the left child of 60 does not have a left subtree, but it does have a right subtree. This is because after 60, we inserted 80. Since 80 was greater than 60, it inserted it to the right, and it, currently the left has nothing in it. The next thing we're going to talk about is traversals. So we have all these nodes in our tree, and we want to print out the values. But how do we do that? And the way that this is typically done is using tree traversal functions. Our next course of action will be to create all three binary tree traversal types. If you are unfamiliar with binary tree traversals, you should take a look at this article on the website Geeks for Geeks about the different types of binary tree traversals. We're going to start with in order traversal. An in order traversal will first visit the left subtree, then it will print and then it will visit the right subtree. All of these traversals are recursive algorithms. So if you are new to the concept, it might seem a little confusing. I suggest reading through the article and doing a couple examples by hand if you're struggling. 
Understanding how traversals work may be confusing, but the functions themselves are actually pretty simple. And we're going to write one now. Under our insert function here, we are going to write a new function called in order traversal. We have a root node that can be a tree node. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. And in this case, our function's not going to return anything. So it's just going to be a void. So to start, we're going to set temp equal to root. And then we have a case if temp does not equal null, we're going to call this function again in order traversal on temp.left. We're going to log out our data. And then we're calling it on temp.right. Just like that. Super simple function. So instead of using this console.log here, what we're going to do is we're going to go bs tree dot in order traversal. All right. So let's see what happens. All right. We got our numbers back in the in order traversal. And now it might be worth saying why this is actually called in order. The reason is, is it returns the values to us in order, literally. It returns them sorted. <laughs> so it explains the name. In order traversal prints out a sorted version of the tree. And honestly, to do uh, pre-order and post-order, it's actually a really simple modification. So what we're going to do is we're going to just copy this function here. We're going to do it under here. Let's change the name to pre-order traversal. And then the only thing we have to change is where this console.log is. It goes above the two. So what this does is it prints the value, and then it checks the left and the right subtree. And then let's do the same thing one more time, but for post-order. Oops. All right, and now for post order, I'm guessing you know, you just put it after, just like that. So let's go down here, clear, and change this to pre-order. We can take a look at how that works. Now you can see it is in a different order. Let's do it again with post order. And now we get it in post order. So we're only changing a single thing in each of these functions. So in the pre-order traversal, we're visiting the root node first, and then we call left and right. And then in post order, we're visiting the root last. If you're not understanding the way that these work, I highly recommend checking out that article and look, doing a couple of these problems by hand to understand how pre-order, post order, and in order actually function and why it works the way that it works. So the last utility function in this video that we'll be talking about is how to search. Our search function will take in a number as a parameter and it will also take in the head node of the tree. And if the value that we included in the parameter is in the binary tree, we will return the node that has that data. Otherwise, the function will return null. So for this function, all we really need to do is repurpose our insert function. So I will put this under our insert function so we can examine the differences. So we need a tree node that we're taking in or null, and we have a default value of the head of the tree. And then we also want to take in a number, and then we want our function to return either a tree node or return null. So to start, we're going to create a new node called temp that takes the value of node. Then we're going to check if temp is null. If it is, we're going to return null. This is our base case. So this basically returns null when we're at the bottom. This means we didn't return, we didn't find the node in the tree, and then the no so that means the node is not in the tree. We're going to have another case that the data is found. So in this case, 
temp.data is equal to the value. If this happens, we want to return temp. Now, if neither of these things happen, we want to do what we did in our insert function right here. So if the value that we're searching for is less than the current value, let's return the search function with the left subtree and pass that value. If it's larger, then let's return the right subtree. All right. Simple as that. So as you can see, this is basically the insert function, just repurposed with a couple more cases where we're checking if the values, if we're at the bottom or if we are finding the value. So let's do a test. Let's go down here. We're going to search for 70. So let's console.log bstree.head 70. Oops. Should have done bstree.search. Like this. All right, so we have our search function and we pass in the head of the tree and 70. Let's give it a test. All right, so our function returned a tree node. This means that we found the function or we found the value in the in the binary search tree and it returned the node that included that value. So we have the data 70, which is what we were expecting. And then we have 70's left and right subtrees. Now let's try it with a value we know isn't in the tree. Let's go 72. Null. So it didn't find the value, so it returned null. That's exactly what we were expecting. I hope this was an informative and useful introduction to creating binary search trees in TypeScript. There's still a ton of features of binary trees that I haven't gone into yet, but in our next video on binary trees, we're gonna go over the new features such as getting the height of the tree and how to balance and unbalance binary tree. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see when the next video is out. Have an awesome day.